It's November 24th, 1956, Tennessee, playing Kentucky and trailing 7-6. to six. Early in the fourth quarter, number 45, Johnny Major starts left, pivots, and then saves the play with five yards around right end. At the Kentucky 42-yard line, Major throws on second and 12, complete for 24 yards. A personal foul call against Kentucky draws another 15 yards. Second and goal, Majors dives into the end zone to put the balls ahead. The All-American tailback puts it out of reach. Majors drives over his own left tackle and rambles for 22 yards and a first down. And on the next play, same thing. Majors cuts off left tackle, then pours it on. 31 yards for the score and a 20-6 victory. Majors accounts for six of the nine fourth quarter first downs. That's the way to go, Albert! All right, run it, run it again, King, run it again. Sammy needs to take two steps, go. Hey, 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 Sammy, John, just, just give him enough to take two steps. We're going full speed, so you don't see me easing it. So just, just tell me where you just do this, John. He said, hey, all right, just give him two steps. All right, here we go. Good bit. Hey, all right, this is X, exit. King, you want X, don't you? Give it to him. Did you work on the timing, Ali? Sam is just creeping. He's just doing like this. He got a sprint. As a collegiate star, Johnny Majors was selected as an All-American in 1956 at the University of Tennessee. He twice gained more than 1,000 yards in a season. Majors was the third-ranked punter in the nation in 1956, the year he capped his college playing career. Is he showing Potter how to get down that low anchor you want? I right, show him how to get down that low anchor. Got to have it this week on that wing tee. We come in here, we're a young football staff. Uh, I uh, I know this, that uh, we're going to lose some football games. We, we, my coaching staff and I, try to convince our football players. It's going to be a tough struggle. We try to convince the fans and the people who are interested in cyclone football that we're not going to win overnight. And we have a difficult struggle. But we've got to believe and think that as long as we work with a positive approach, as long as we work and think, if we work harder than the other people we're playing against, uh, if we work harder in preparing with spring practice, if we work harder in recruiting, and particularly regarding our football team, if we work harder in off season, in spring practice, and in summer months preparing for our football season, it's going to be much less difficult for us to give up a quit in the fourth quarter. And as long as you have a chance to win in the fourth quarter, uh, as long as you're close in the fourth quarter, you've got a chance to win. And that's what we've tried to, to uh, do this year and trying to instill. I'll say this, um, I'm, we have a, an off-season program we call the fourth quarter class. This uh, year I may change it and call it the first half class. And maybe that'll help us get started a little quicker. But I still believe 
as long as you've got a chance, as long as you're close in the fourth quarter, you've got a chance to win. And we've tried to build confidence along that line. Dance was good. Up to the point. Dance was good. All right, let's go. One more time. I say do it this time. I believe you do it. I believe you do it. Chuck, you want a fourth Majors has coached at Tennessee, the University of Arkansas, and in December 1967, he assumed his first head coaching job at Iowa State University. He brought with him a young staff and a tremendous desire to produce a winning team. That's better, Flyer. It's better. Get better. Unlock. Unlock. Me and uh, listen up a second. I think we had a good session last night. I think everybody knows we had a, uh, our mistakes corrected. And I think we're looking at that. You offensive people and defensive people realize some people out here playing football and trying to get better every week. And they know this. We got a tremendous football team coming up this week. And I mentioned last night that they were possibly great. I think possibly we overuse the word great. And the reason I mention this tonight, today, is that I don't want us to be overawed by opponents because I think we learned a good lesson last week. We played one half of football, and it showed that when we played a half of football, how well we could play against one of the so-called great teams in the league. And the thing we've got to make up our mind is this. This week, and from now, that we're going to play 60 minutes of winning football. And 60 minutes of dedicated football, we'll get better. And we're going to close that gap between great football teams and average football teams. We can be a good one. We can build good ones. We can all get better. And one thing we ask you, you play 60 minutes. 60 minutes of good football, and we can close that gap. Make them bleed. We've got to make them bleed. Because they're a good football team, but you saw last night we can close that gap and get there. I'll never be satisfied with Benton beat 7 to 6. And for God's sakes, not 42 to 7. And I'll never have a happy expression on my face as long as that happens. But uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you this, we did learned something in the second half. I'm not rationalizing we're getting beat. We learned something. And that's the reason last night I took the whole squad, offensively and defensively. We are always broken down. Offensive coaches grade the film and short to their offensive people. Defensive people, their defensive people. But last night I took the, uh, to the film and got the whole squad in there. I went through every, uh, the whole film. I showed them people who were blocking with two minutes to go. I showed them taking the ball seven minutes down feeling because 10 people do their job. Ten people can do the perfect job, and one man can make a mistake and cause you to, to, to lose a ball game or to cause you not to score, cause you not to have a great play. And it's something you're going to have. You're going to have mistakes. But we've had too many, and you're going to have mistakes with any football team, particularly a young one. But just show them how close we are to having a good one. I said, we're not going to be great, but we've got a chance to have a good football team. And I said, they talk about great teams, but doing better and showing you these things, we can close the gap. And this, I said, this is a team at the nucleus of the, of the team won the Big 8 championship last year and won the, the Orange Bowl championship. And I said, we weren't that far away. They had greater athletes than we got. But look at the effort that Andy Waller gave. Look how much better he got. I says, look at uh, Besky block on this play. Watch Jeff Allen, who's a good ball carrier. Watch him block downfield. I says, watch John Waters fight for his life and scramble. And watch Tisdale when he's in there. Well, he's got a chance to help us win here in the future. He did a good job when he's in there. I said, we've got a chance if we continue to close the gap. I said, as long, I said, the next week's going to be tough as heck, too. The next chance. But I said, as long as we continue to continue to close the gap, we've got a chance. We're going to get better, we think. We're going to get better. I'll say this. Uh, I, I believe this. This is the toughest two ball games, and in my opinion, the toughest five ball games in a row that I've ever been confronted with as a player or coach, anywhere I've ever been in all my life. High school college playing and college coaching, assistant coach and head coach. This is the most formidable. Uh, opposition that I've ever seen a team have to face. And the only thing I hope is that we can continue to improve, we can be aggressive on defense, and that we can uh, and continue to, our offensive line are blocking some people at times. I mean, fit, I'd say 90% better than I thought they'd ever do. And we still got to improve on our pass protections and things. But we've got a tough schedule, but we've got to fight for our lives and hope we've got a chance to win one or two down the road. We'll be lucky to do it, but we've got a chance that we close the gap and play almost Mistake-free football, we've got a chance maybe to look up on one or two, and we'll be very fortunate, but we've got a chance, and we're going to fight for that chance, I'll tell you that right now. So I've got all i got to say, and I appreciate the efforts of some people coming out to meet our team Saturday night. There was confusion in our return schedule. We'll get that straightened out this week. Uh, I've talked to uh, our people who are in charge of that, and we'll try to get that straightened out. And I want to make this clear. I don't want any planned celebrations or speeches when we come back and get beaten. I don't ever expect that, as I mentioned before. The only thing I say, we appreciate the people coming out and greeting the football team anytime. 
Now, if we win, win a big one, I'd like you to have the, the last figures right, introduce the players and have the band play and everything else. But anytime you want to come out and meet the players, we're pleased to see you. I'll say that, but there'll be no speeches. We don't expect a big celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Cyclones have not enjoyed tremendous success in their first season under Coach Majors. That is, if you only judge a team by its one-loss record. The 33-year-old Majors has taken a team that was given little chance to win any games, won three games, and maybe more, on a given Saturday. They have played their hearts out, always giving their fans their money's worth. Not only do the players give their all on the field, but Coach Majors puts in a strenuous 60 minutes each week on the sidelines. I'd heard uh, many different remarks about the apathy and lethargy uh, uh, regarding Iowa State alumni and students and fans, but I think that our young football team has created some excitement. I think that uh, I've seen a tremendous response from the student body since I've been here. I've seen a tremendous response from the alumni association, association meetings uh, that I've attended, the Cyclone Club meetings. I know the first one or two I went to when I initially took the job, we held it in a restaurant booth. Our meetings, but then as this uh, summer went along and the approach football season, the crowds got bigger, the enthusiasm was shown, and our football team, our young team, I think gave them something to, to yell about at times. We had a tremendous, I think, uh, support from the student body. I think we sold uh, 11,000 student tickets for an all-time high. We broke the, uh, uh, the attendance record for one single game, and I hope for the season this year. So this is encouraging and I hope that we continue to improve because great fan support is a carryover. It certainly carries over to the football field. I think with our football team uh, that has enthusiasm on the field, my coaching staff and I have enthusiasm, if we see that the fans also and the student body has enthusiasm, this carries over and I think that they have a better performance on the football field. Hold it. Here we go. What do we got? We got to come up with something here. 74. Okay. Third, and a yard to go. The fans supporting a winning team think of their season in terms of days. Happy days when their team was marching from Saturday to Saturday downing opponents. The fans behind a team that is losing think of their season in terms of moments. Moments when the team scores, long passes, good runs, blocked kicks. Iowa State had its moments this year. More than any Cyclone fan dreamed the team would have this season. Jackie, see how they look when we if we go right, see how that uh or we go left, see how the handbacks look so we're on the 98 special now. Tell them to be looking again. Tell Jack to be looking. Are they playing cover four all the way? Are they playing cover four all the way? They haven't ever time. That's what I thought. Ask him what does the end look like we've got a chance on 91? Kick it, kick 
go kick it. Kick it. Water. That's another reverse look. Can you have a look? Is it there at the end slip? Let's go. Junk. We gotta use a little imagination now. We're moving on. We gotta go first down. We gotta come with something. Use our imagination on first down, King. In the dressing room at halftime, Johnny Majors is still a man on the move. Nervously puffing on a cigarette, he moves among players and coaches, asking technical questions about first half play of the coaches, raising individual players, exhorting others to play harder. At halftime, ahead or behind, a coach must gauge the spirit of his players collectively and individually. The message must be just right. Don't take that. So you set up and make him take one way, take the upfield, and you run. Right, right. He's coming up field, so you're going out on field. I'll get Jock Johnson, Jock, you, you start the second half, Jock. Willie, Jock, stop. Both of you doing all right. And you start the second half, Jock. Offensive line, you're doing a good job, pass protecting. Keep it up. We just dropped a couple of passes. You're doing a good job. John, don't forget on 50, 70, like 74 out or 54, don't forget that. If you're tight ends, coach, even open, tailback, sir. We're going to run, we may run the wagon. Don't forget that. Second half. Don't forget that. 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 Okay, Coach Madden, you got through. All right, listen up, everybody turn around and listen up. I don't have to tell you this. We're doing a lot of good things out there. We're doing a lot of good things look like a football team. And uh, I missed assignment here, I missed assignment there, I dropped pass here or there. When we, if we could carry and continue a drive. And we know what we can do. We learned a great lesson last week, what we can do in the second half. And you know that you played against them for 30 minutes. They're not that much better. In fact, I don't know whether they're better than you are right now. And I don't think you're convinced that they are. You know what you can do in the second half. We've got to decide we're going to hang on that ball. We're going to do our assignments. We're protecting the passer. We're blocking them. Let's go out there and play 30 minutes of football. Let's get after them now. Let's go. <laughs> chance on the kickoff return? King, was there a chance there in the middle? On the return at all? Was... Had to the right return. Yeah, he left your wedge. Take it right up in there. Man to man. Man to man in the secondary. There he is, he's open! Wide open. Wide open. I've gambled on fourth down, and I've kicked less on third down than I ever thought I would in my life. 
but I think modern day football uh, uh, forces you to do some of these things. But I do believe this, and I think at first, that we try to convince uh, our staff meetings, we try to talk about these things, we try to convince our squad that you practice like you play. If you practice with enthusiasm, you practice with effort, this will normally carry over to Saturday and you'll play with effort and play with enthusiasm. And if you believe that you're going to have a chance in the fourth quarter, you're going to practice like you got a chance in the fourth quarter, you'll play like this. I also think, and we try to stress this, that more football games are lost than won. So we strive to not beat ourselves. And you'll see the ball games we've lost this year and the ball games that people have lost to us. I say this, they've more, they've been, there have been more of them than have been lost than we have won ourselves or the opponents have won against us. We have stopped ourselves offensively when we, got, when we were beaten. And uh, the other team stopped themselves when we won ball games. So you beat yourselves and we strive to make a minimum of mistakes. The team that makes the fewest mistakes normally wins in a close ball game with fairly equal material. And uh, we try to impress them on our football players this. Okay, you're doing all right. You're doing all right. Hey, uh, those on water, you're doing all right. Wins, wins, get back here now. Get down. You all right? You're the bottom. Let's make him go. Make him count now. Make him count. Where'd he come from? Where'd he come from? Okay, good, good. All right, good. Jay! Hold it. All right, good break. Big break, defense. Big break. All right, that's where to go, offense. We move the ball. We move the ball. Come on, Benny. Johnny Majors is a man on the move, and Iowa State University football has started to move with him. Recruiting is the most important single factor, I think, in winning in college football today. It's highly competitive. It costs money. You must have facilities. Uh, you must have a coaching staff that can sell uh, your product. Uh, you must show uh, that you're improving in what you're trying to do or that you, or that you are excelling in uh, football at the present stage. And uh, I'll say this. Uh, I think that if we decide we want to to strive for excellence in uh, college football at Iowa State. I think we can get excellence in the college football field. I think we can maintain it because um, even though there aren't a great deal of uh, real good football players in the state, there are some very good ones, but uh, there are, I'd say 15 to 20 each year, and we have to share some of them with Iowa, or quite a few of them with Iowa. But we are centrally located in the middle part of the country. And this is a real good factor in that we can go east, uh, south, north, and west and recruit the outstanding football players. And if we decide, the people who want to win or who have the power to win at Iowa State, if all of us decide that we want to have excellence and we want to strive for excellence in football, we can get the job done. If we continue to improve our facilities, we have a lot of catching up to do from this standpoint. If we want to have the facilities, that attracts the good football player, or the good student athlete, I should say. And we've got a chance to win good and win big and win consistently. We have a lot of catching up to do because our facilities are probably um, behind everybody in the Big Eight conferences. And we were playing, we were playing a catch-up game with these people today. But I think that our football team has shown that they want to catch up. Our coaching staff has worked very hard, very diligently in improving, and we've had cooperation.